Asian island of Taiwan is a place I visited many years ago. I've returned multiple times, but never on this scale. This time, I'm planning a big solo adventure. Welcome to Yanmingshan National Park, Taiwan's dormant volcano. I didn't think that Taiwan had landscape like this. This is incredible. Using Taiwan's efficient transportation system, I'm stopping in the major cities, making my way around the entire island in three weeks, starting from Taipei and ending in Yilan. They wrote the language which Netherlands people create for them in that case. This is an area of Taiwan I get to see that I actually didn't even plan on seeing. Wow. I've never wow. seen this video wow. On this trip, I'm sampling Taiwan's delights and meeting locals and travelers along the way. All right, I have my fill of meat. Pause. You tried it. You don't like it? No. Revisiting old sites from past travels while exploring new ones has given me the opportunity of rediscovering Taiwan. Welcome to Taiwan. <laughs> She's a speed demon. God help us all. Wow, it's still as cool as I remember it. What I didn't expect is that I'd be paragliding. It doesn't matter how many times you come to a country, there's always something more to see. This will be the sixth time going to Taiwan. What possessed me to do that? I have no idea. I remember seeing it on a map thinking, wow, that island is tiny. I want to go there. And so I did. And I enjoyed it so much that I went back a few months later. I guess that's the obsessive compulsive behavior in me that when I enjoy something, I want to return to it so I can relive the experience. And that's what I did, returning every year, but then visiting a different city like Tainan, Taichung, and then Kaohsiung. And then one day I realized that as awesome as this is, there are 194 other countries I could be visiting. And so I put Taiwan on the back burner. I don't even think I was doing YouTube at the time, but I was making videos as a way to journal my life and my travels. I did post them on YouTube and eventually took them down, <laughs> except for one because they're just not up to par to what I'm doing now. And when I tell you they're terrible, well, take a look for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> when I started having the idea of returning back to Taiwan, it was around the <coughs> of 2020, which pretty much shut down Taiwan for nearly three years. And now it's reopened and it's a perfect time to go. But I was thinking if I was to return, instead of visiting a single city like I did back in the past, what if I did one big solo adventure around the entire island? And so that's what we're gonna do. It'll be another classic Arc Styles travel adventure of fast paced traveling, seeing as much as possible in very little time. Let the adventure begin. My first flight would be from New York City with a short layover in LAX. It's been a long time. Can't wait to be back in Taiwan. Then it's a 15 hour flight to Taipei, the capital of Taiwan. Arriving in the evening is just in time to sample some of Taiwan's nightlife. All right, welcome to Taipei. We arrived a little bit late, around 5 p.m. I usually like to fly in earlier so I can enjoy most of the day, but you know, it's okay because we are now in the Shilling night market to have dinner. The thing that I miss most about Taiwan is their night markets. Hands down, the best night markets ever. Really cheap, inexpensive, delicious food. Except for one thing, and you'll notice it when you come to the night markets. It's this very distinct, pungent smell. And if you ever smelled, if you ever been to Taiwan, you know what I'm talking about. And that smell is stinky tofu. Not a fan. I just can't get into eating something that just doesn't smell good. Even though people say that it's delicious. I think I'm going to try it today because this is my sixth time in Taiwan. And every time I've been here, I've always avoided it. And now that I'm here and I'm doing a you know, video about it, showing you guys, sharing my experience, I think it's time that I man up and try some stinky tofu. So let's find a spot. Joining me that evening was Jade, a local into dance who would happily help me in finding good stinky tofu. So what's this called, Jade? Tangkulu. I'm eating tangkulu. <laughs> this is Jade, everybody. Say hello, Jade. Hi. Literally the first person I met in Taiwan. <laughs> I was looking for directions for my Airbnb and she was sitting on the corner like a homeless girl. I asked her for directions and she helped me out. And now we're here at the Xinling Night Market. Choose one? Yeah. I'll do this one. Okay. 
stinking tofu. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> stinky tofu is a Chinese form of fermented tofu in brine with vegetables and meat for one to two days to add odor. Just try it. All right, all right. Try it. So it's good. You don't like it? No! Look at her. She loves it. <laughs> <laughs> The rest of the evening I spent alone, wandering throughout the night market and admiring all the life happening at every turn. Busy day. I think that's it for me. Great day exploring the Shilin night market. Gonna head home now because tomorrow I have a big day. First actual day of sightseeing in Taipei tomorrow. So, see you tomorrow. Good morning. First full day exploring Taipei City. And we're starting bright and early. It's not even 7 a.m. yet. But I want to beat the heat and I want to beat the crowd because what we're going to be doing today is the Elephant Mountain hike. And this hike is going to give me an overview of Taipei City and Taipei 101. All right, there she is. Now, this used to be the tallest building in the world from 2004 to 2009 until the Burj Khalifa in Dubai beat it out. Now, if you don't want to do this hike, you could just go to Taipei 101. They have an observation deck, but I did that like 10 years ago and for $16, $20, I'd rather do the hike because the whole point of this trip is to do things that I've never done before. So let's get this hike started. Doesn't seem like much of a hike, just seems like a lot of stairs. So I'm definitely getting my Stairmaster on. <laughs> We're just starting to see some of the skyline through the morning fog. This is the peak. This is the shot you get to see a lot on Instagram, kind of like that one. They usually sit on top of those rocks there to get that shot. The weather's really cloudy. It says it's gonna clear up by 10, so maybe we'll stick around for another hour, hour and a half, and see if things clear up. Unfortunately, the weather didn't get any better, but it didn't stop me from enjoying my surroundings and getting my shot. All right, I'm out of here. <laughs> Ironically, the clouds are not clearing up and the sun is coming out. But at the same time, there's a big group of tourists coming in. And that's the thing with traveling. It's either get here early and have it all to yourself like I did, or you come late and you're stuck with a crowd of tourists. But I just met Spencer and Melanie, a photographer and a model. <laughs> really nice people. They even got to take some photos of me. Look to the sky. It's just like you look to the building. So I could post them on the Instagram. As you can see, my Airbnb is in the center of the Shilin market, so you get to see all the morning busyness. 99% of this country runs on scooters, as you can see, especially from this lineup. I'm gonna be taking a train because Taiwan's train system is immaculate. I mean, it's perfect. It runs efficiently, and I don't really plan on renting a scooter and driving in this crazy busy city. Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall Square is a national monument and landmark in memory of the former president of the Republic of China. Entering from the Liberty Arch, the square is coupled with the National Theater and National Concert Hall. It's been years, but I remember walking through this part of the temple and seeing a bunch of kids just dancing in the middle of this little column here. 
what I want to show you guys is the exchanging of the guard ceremony and I'm not sure what time it happens but we're here so we'll wait it out. So we came just in time. It's supposed to start at 12. That was beautiful, wasn't it? That was really difficult to film. They're so well balanced. That whole thing took about maybe 20, 25 minutes. So holding the camera up steady for that long, my shoulders are killing me. What they do is amazing. But anyway, we got the shot. So now it's off to get some lunch and then to the next location. All right, so we're at the Bo Cleau historical block. I have no idea if I'm saying that correctly, but when I asked my taxi driver to take me there. He kept saying, okay, okay, okay. So I guess I'm saying it right. The 18th century block in architecture is a representation of cultures throughout Taiwan's different eras. From the Qing Dynasty, Japanese colonization, to early post-World War II period, uniquely situated in one of the most prosperous areas. Taxi driver said that I can stick my head out the sunroof to get a better view of the city. <laughs> the forest. You walk in here. Okay. okay, no problem. Thank you. This is Pier 15, and I've never been here before. I don't even think it was around when I came here last, but this is like the trendy new market area. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find some dinner. All right, this place looks happening, so just a matter of making a choice. Alright, I've made my choice and I'm gonna go with the most cliche Taiwanese dish ever. Pizza. It's just what I'm craving. Well, the pizza wasn't great, though I didn't expect it to be. So this is an amazing place to watch the sunset and see the city. I would definitely come back here again. Good morning, day number three from Taipei, and it is what, 7.15 in the morning right now. And today what we're gonna be doing is taking a day trip to the area of Keelong, which is like a fishing port village. And looking forward to this day because this is totally outside of the city life of Taipei. It's an area that I've never been to before, so it's kind of cool to get outside of the main area and check out places that I've never seen before. So yeah, let's get this day going. The bus from Taipei to Keelong would only take 40 minutes. All right, just made it to Keelong. Stop for a snack. Now I had to take one more bus to Zhengxing Port. And I was completely lost, but the gentleman that was on the bus with me was nice enough to come in the right direction. He actually didn't know himself, but he asked another guy. And yeah, really friendly, helpful people here. On the northeastern part of Taiwan, Keelong is a major port city as Taiwan's second largest seaport. It was built in 1934 during the Japanese colonial period. Made it. 
I can already see the colorful buildings. Let's go explore. Though the city now is much quieter than its bustling past, these days the Zhengping fishing port is most recognized amongst locals and tourists for its row of 16 multicolored houses situated along the bank. She's saying just go? She's saying just leave? Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Showing me around is Solana, who I met at the market that her family ran. This temple is for ensuring people to go fishing and come back safely. And those are the names the, for the donators to the, to the temple. Okay. Do you mind going? Sure. Come in with the right side and go out with the left side. The license for your safety or good grades? Good grades? Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there's five, five stairs here. Mm -hmm. and you know the reason five for that? It's the good guy. And if there's um, like two or four, six, eight stairs. It's like more for um, people who are already dead with not really happy. Yeah. They will do some revenge or something. I don't want any revenge on me. <laughs> Those are all mods, the, um, the biggest uh, god for us. She's the, the god for the land and the ocean, and she protects everything. Safe. The three is tight. Sun tight. Really? <laughs> uh, they have the different weapons. This god. Just to protect the mud. You can listen to everything. More than kilometers. And this yeah. god can see everything. 17.7? 17.7. came to Taiwan and controlled Taiwan for I don't know how many decades. Then Japanese come to Taiwan. This is an eagle, the bird of Kiwon. Alright, I'm gonna introduce you guys to Solana and we are in Helping Island Park. Which means peace. And I only know that because she, she told me that. Randomly, I met her at the fish market. I was like, is this the directions to this park? And she goes, no, it's the wrong one, but I will take you there. So, look at that. You, you meet someone random and spend a day with someone cool. There's some fish. the language which Netherlands people create for them in that cave. This, but you can actually go swimming here. I wish I would have known, I would have brought my shorts. This would have been really, really cool. Look, I told you I'd bring her back safe, right? Five hours? No. Was it five hours? No, 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 no. like two hours. Two hours. Less than two hours, I think. Regardless of the time, it was fun and informative. Bye, take care. So thank you, Solana, for taking the time to show me your charming city of Kilong. I am in the Beitao district. Took an early morning train here, which by the way is such an efficient, quiet and pleasant experience. So different from taking a train in New York City. But Beitao is the district on the north end of Taipei and I'm here to check out the Thermal Valley, which are sulfuric natural hot springs. You can't swim in them, but it stays like this, they make me excited about traveling in Taiwan because it goes to show you that one, I didn't even know places like this even existed in Taiwan. And number two, it doesn't matter how many times you come to a country, there's always something more to see. So let's go check out the Thermal Valley. 
Sometimes referred by locals as Held Valley, Thermo Valley was developed as a hot spring resort during the Japanese era from 1895 to 1945. The Beital of today is known for its high quality spas, hotels, and green lush living environment. <laughs> yep, there's that delightful sulfuric smell. Looks like something out of Lost World. <laughs> By the way, admission to this place is completely free. So there is a hot spring you can actually bathe in. And the guy was nice, he was like, would you like to come in? You can come in at 10.30, everybody gets about 25 minutes. But I just didn't feel comfortable being in hot pools with older local people, so I'll pass for now. Locals getting their kung fu on, that's really cool. After a quick visit at Beitao's Thermal Valley, I was now going to be taking a one and a half hour bus to the area of Xiaoyoukun. All right, welcome to Yanmingshan National Park. Now this park is huge. There are different points you can stop off at to check out different parts of the park. But I came here specifically to show you Taiwan's dormant volcano. Check this out. Known as the Simmering Mountain of Fire, the scenic 850 meter volcano is a geological feature of bubbling puddles and fumes that rise from the fumaroles in the distance. Well, you can feel the heat and the smell and taste just sticks with you. There is a trail that will take you over that mountain, but you know, the guide said it takes about four hours, which I'm good enough to seeing this. <laughs> All right, this is it. My time in Taipei is done. It's been great to revisit this place and recount some old memories and create some new ones. But now it's time to head to the city of Taichung, which should be about a two hour train ride. First order of business is to get some food. So we are now headed to the Shendi New Village, which is a craft market, but back in mid-century, it used to be a dormitory for government employees. The area has since been redeveloped into a lively cultural and creative base for young entrepreneurs, starting their own businesses with stands selling crafts and products, attracting local and foreign visitors. Oh, hi. <laughs> you made this. Yeah. What's up? So hi. what is it? Almond. Almond. Oh, almond tea. Yeah. That is delicious. Do you like? Yeah, 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 yeah. For you, free. For you. She just gave me a free almond milk tea. How awesome is that? This place is really cool that night. Say hello, Phoebe. Hello. Yeah, it's a little bit too dark. So that was a great night at the uh, market. Shenji. Shenji. My accent's horrible, but it was a nice evening at the Shenji night new village. Um, was gonna go to the night market afterwards, but I ended up going to a Japanese restaurant and meeting Phoebe there. So we just started talking and hanging out. So we're gonna walk to the park now, right? What's this area called, Phoebe? The Park Great random first night in Taichung. Went to the Shenji New Village, that was awesome, and met Phoebe, and then she took me to this park here to watch some live music. That's why I love traveling. All right, day number two from Taichung. It's about 10 a.m. right now, and um, starting a little late in the day because I had to catch up on some sleep and laundry, <laughs> travel stuff. 
But anyway, I am searching online right now for things to do in the area. And after last night's event, and from what I'm seeing here, I'm quickly finding out that Taichung is not such a sleepy city as compared to like a Taipei or Kaohsiung, which is Taiwan's uh, second largest city, which we're going to check out in a few days. But from what I'm seeing here, there are a lot of trendy areas to check out. So that's what we're going to do today. All right, first stop of the day, and we are at Animation Lane. That's right, this place is cool. Now, I did play quite a bit of Street Fighter back in my day. You win! All right, you guys are gonna have to forgive me because I'm not really well versed in anime. I mean, aside from like Dragon Ball Z and old school Akira. So if you guys know what I'm looking at, hit me up in the comments. Looks like they're working on some new ones here. Oh, it's a Luigi. After a great time reminiscing in Animation Lane, it was now time to explore another part of the city. I was like, what is making that beautiful song? I thought it was an ice cream truck. <laughs> Turns out it's just a garbage truck. <laughs> After all the walking that I did, I decided to spend the rest of the afternoon in Taichung Park to chill and relax. Last day in Taichung, but we are actually in the grasslands of Nangtao, which is great because uh, this is an area of Taiwan I get to see that I didn't, actually didn't even plan on seeing. We are in the Xinjing farm, and I'm doing this through a group tour, which <laughs> funny thing is that they didn't actually have an English-speaking guide, but it's been okay. He seems like a really cool guy, and he's pretty much just letting us wander around, So, which is fine because I'm here to see the animals. I don't really need a guide to see animals. There's a gift for you. <laughs> And this is great because I get to spend my day out in this beautiful place with perfect weather. And then from here, go directly to my next place, which is Tainan. Yeah, the Xinjing farm was a little bit too touristy for me. There was a show going on, but it seemed like it was geared more towards families with their children. Well, I thought there'd be more of a farm element here since it's called a Xinjing farm. But there's only sheep here. The place is pretty small. And there's a show going on, but I don't really I don't understand what they're saying, so. I started wandering off further down and I came across some horses which made the day a lot better for me. Oh look at the beautiful white one out there. Hey buddy. What are you doing? I think he likes me. Hey, how are you doing? I like you too. That was a beautiful intimate moment we just had. Now I can leave happy. <laughs> so was it worth it? I don't know. Overall, it's still a beautiful day to come out before I head to Tainan. We made one more unexpected stop on this tour to Li Yu Lake. All right, final stop of the day. Our driver brought us to this lake. I don't know the name of it, but he brought us here to check it out before we head back to Taichung. It's been a great day. Next morning, I boarded Taiwan's high-speed railway for a two-hour ride to Tainan. Now, Tainan is a place that I remember very, very well because I came here many years ago, back in the days when I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and I actually considered moving out here, 
and going the teacher route. I ended up meeting a lady who ran a space and started teaching music classes to children there. And I did that for about a month and it worked out okay, but inevitably I ended up coming back home. Now, the place we're going to be visiting today is called Kaohsiung Moon World Grand Canyon. And I don't even know if this is still within Tainan because it's so far away. It's like two and a half hours away. But from what I'm seeing in these pictures, it's incredibly picturesque and unworldly. But let's get going because it is way out there. You have arrived. Ended up taking a taxi instead of the bus, which wasn't cheap, but it got me here in 45 minutes as opposed to three hours, but this is incredibly worth it. The connecting peaks of Chalk Soil Hills appears as if you are on the moon with the geographic landscape being unique to the Zushan district of Tainan. So what makes this terrain so unique is that it's mostly sandstone, shale, and chalk soil that comes from different districts of Taiwan, and it makes it so difficult for vegetation to grow here. This is incredible. I didn't think that Taiwan had landscape like this. And the tour groups are just starting to come in, so this is my cue to get out of here. I'm glad I had this all to myself. Wow, talk about perfect timing. They literally just came in in droves, leaving at a perfect time. So the drive out there was really nice. The location was really cool and unique. This place is beautiful. Even the driver's impressed. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever been out there before. And I was gonna see more of Tainan once we got back into the city, but I ended up getting really car sick and nauseous on the drive back. So I pretty much spent the rest of the afternoon relaxing. And it's unfortunate that with only two days, I won't get to see as much of Tainan as I would like, but it's onto my next location, which is the second biggest city in Taiwan. And is also the midway point of my trip, which is Kaohsiung. Okay, well rested, feeling a lot better. Now I'm at the Dadong Night Market, which is about 20 minute walk from where I'm staying. This place is huge. So uh, let's see what delicious local foods we can find. Night markets serve what is known as Zai Chi, which translates to small eats, inexpensive delights enjoyed at informal settings, tables, or while walking. An entire pig skin. This dude literally brought his cat to dinner. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, please. Is that smell of stinky tofu again? Don't know where it's coming from, but I need to remove myself from this area. Cheese. Original. Original. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I got some noodles with eggs. I just need a place to sit and eat this thing. Uh, let's see if I can sit here. They'll probably kick me out. Sweet. Oh, sugar. Whoa. This one right here? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna try that. Thank you. It looks delicious. <laughs> Durian. Another thing that stinks. Oh. Alright, I have my fill of meat, pause, and noodles. Actually, two orders of noodles, but I can't leave without having dessert. And what I'm craving right now is bubble tea. If you don't know what that is, it is a Taiwanese drink with tapioca balls. It was invented in Taiwan and it's freaking delicious. And that's what I'm craving right now. So let's see if we can find that, which shouldn't be too hard in Taiwan. There we go. Boba tea. Hi, can I get the brown sugar tapioca tea? This, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Got my sweet. Now we can go home. Lock into this car over here. What do we have? <laughs> 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 
Yeah, it's so random. <laughs> and with that, good night. The following morning would be another high-speed train, one hour to Taiwan's second largest city, Kaohsiung. All right, welcome to Kaohsiung. Now, I was here many, many years ago, and of all the places that I've been to in Taiwan, this is the one place that I've actually wanted to revisit to show you guys because this is one of the coolest places ever, and it's called the Dragon and Tiger Pagoda. You ready for this? Check that out. Built in 1976, the pagoda is located at Lotus Lake. Each tower is seven stories tall, with paintings of Buddhist Christigaba, the Twelve Magi, the Jade Emperor's Thirty Palaces, and paintings of Confucius within the temple. This is why you come early. You see all the tourists flocking in. There is another part of the temple further down that way, so let's go check that one out. Take a look at this bad boy. It's still as cool as I remember it. Once you come out the tail end, it leads you to this Riverside view of the city. This section are the spring and autumn pavilions. The Five Mile and Peiching Pavilion, which are further down, all sit within the lake, overlooked by the small tortoise mountains in the distance. And we reached the last section of the pagoda. All right, that's it. I'm so glad I got to revisit this place. It's still as amazing as I remember it. There was a little bit of a crowd earlier, but I just know how to work my way around it and have it all to myself. And it just amazes me that something this grand and epic, which seems like a world away, is just minutes drive from the main city. So if you're ever in Kaohsiung, you definitely have to come visit this place. Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy this moment just a little while longer and then head back to the city. Alright, good morning from Kaohsiung, day number two. What we're going to be doing is taking this ferry to Sijing. The Gushan Ferry is a 10-minute ride to the island of Sijing, where the activity for today will be to visit the Sihao Lighthouse. That was a mouthful. It is boiling hot out here today, so what we're going to do is we can rent either an electric scooter or one of these bikes here to head to the lighthouse and then drive around the, this little island. So, that's going to be our ride for the next two hours. Oh, by the way, that's Jitima. Just met her. She's from Thailand. She's going to be joining me today. You want to be behind the wheel? You want to drive? No! <laughs> I don't know how to drive. You... We're going to crash. <laughs> okay. Because we're going too fast and too furious. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I speed. Sijing Island is the second smallest district of Kaohsiung City at just 0.5 square miles and a population of 26,000. Once connecting to the mainland until 1967, being severed, creating a second entry to the port of Kaohsiung. Just to let you know how hot it is, even Jitima, who's from Thailand, says this is hot. I mean, not hot to Thailand standards, but hot enough to be effective. I think it's this way. Okay. Right? Super hot. <laughs> <laughs> during the Qing Dynasty, the harbor was opened to foreign trade in 1863. It was during the Japanese rule that the expansion of the harbor's lighthouse was rebuilt in 1916, with its current Baroque style being completed in 1918. I had no idea there was actually a beach out there, so we might walk it later on. I don't know about swimming because we didn't bring a bathing suit, but yeah, maybe, maybe just jump it out on the way because it's freaking hot. building I'm staying at. This is so worth coming out here. One of the nicest places I've actually visited so far on this trip, but it is scorching hot, so we're gonna get some shade somewhere, get some lunch. Hey, don't go over the line, <laughs> don't go over the line. <laughs> Welcome to Taiwan. <laughs> 
She's a speed demon. God help us all. Oh. You're like a crazy oh. ice cream driver. Oh, be careful. Hi, <laughs> uh, ding, 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 ding. Whoa, no. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> that evening, we had dinner and admired Kaohsiung's city for one last time. Because in the morning, we were both taking the train, traveling four hours to the city of Hualien. All right, day number three from Hualien. Now, if you skipped a couple of days, it's because uh, the first day, GT Ma and I, we basically just went to the night market and I didn't bring my main camera for that, which I think I should have because it turned out that that market is one of the largest with 400 vendors, but also one of the nicest ones that I've seen. Day number two, we were supposed to do this activity I'm about to show you, but weather was just awful. And we ended up coming down anyway and meeting up with the guide and the guide was super nice, ended up showing us around the town. It is currently raining and cannot be seen. Yeah. Mm. Our appointment was for 8.30, but it's been raining all morning and the guide is being nice enough to kind of show us around. He's actually taking us to a waterfall right now to check out, to kill some time to see if we can wait till noon and see if the skies clear up. We even took us to a restaurant where we had the largest beef noodles ever. We stuck around to about 12, 31 o'clock. It didn't clear up, so I eventually just canceled that. But this morning, I got a text message saying that the weather was good. Now, it's a little bit cloudy, so it's not perfect, but it's good enough. And when I came to Taiwan, I knew that I would be seeing some old places, seeing some cities, seeing some landscapes. But what I didn't expect is that I'd be paragliding. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be awesome. Now, unfortunately, Jitima is on her way to Taipei, so it's just me. To my surprise, when I was researching things to do in Hualien, this was available, and I didn't expect that. I mean, the reason I came to Hualien was to do the Taroko National Park, but due to the weather, it's just, it's just not smart to do it. And I only have one day to see Hualien. So, if I was going to only have one day, what better way to see Hualien than from up above? So, let's get suited up. <laughs> it's me? Yeah. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> run, 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 run. I like this guy already. One, two, three, go! Keep it up! Keep it up! Keep it up! Keep it up! Cemetery. Thank you. No, oh, thank you. Very fast. Spider, very cool. That was awesome. Great time. <laughs> We're double vlogging. <laughs> Retire my helmet. Fourth time doing this, and it may be repetitive in some of my videos, but I don't care. I love this activity. It's amazing. First time doing it was in Albania, and I loved it so much that I actually went back the next day and did it again. Then I got to do it in Turkey, and now in Taiwan. This was incredible. The landscape is just so beautiful and peaceful out here. And it may have been cloudy, but it was still, it was still worth it. All right, let's get back because now I'm on to the last stop of my trip, and that is Yilan. There's my right. I was pretty lucky with the weather that day because as soon as I was done, it started to rain. You are in luck. Yeah, very lucky. <laughs> now I'm off for another train ride, one and a half hours to my final destination of this trip, Yilan. Alright, 
So we made it to the Airbnb in Yilan and the weather is complete garbage right now. So we're gonna use this day to stay in and figure out some plans because I've got two days here, but I've got four different sets of plans. And I guess it's just gonna come down to prioritizing what I wanna see and what I wanna get out of this trip, especially for my last couple of days here. And of course the weather, because everything that I wanna see is pretty far outside of the city. So stay tuned and we'll figure out what's gonna happen in the next couple of days. Hopefully this video has a nice ending. <laughs> Good morning from Yilan, and for today's activity, we're going to be doing some whale watching and dolphins. Now, how are we going to see any whales? I have no idea how they're going to pull that off because when you're in the open ocean, I guess it's the luck of the draw. It is nature, but we are in the month of April, and this is the perfect time to see whales. I have seen dolphins in Belize and in Turkey, and those were magical moments. Always happy to see dolphins, but I've never seen a whale. If I get to see that, that would be... <laughs> bucket list level so yeah let's get started now I have to admit I did not start this tour with enthusiasm there was no English guide which obviously altered my experience and the weather was just terrible I was cold we were getting soaked from the boat thrashing there was a point where we sailed for at least an hour with nothing in sight then I overheard someone talking over the loudspeaker I had no idea what was going on, so I looked over and I saw people pointing. And then it happened. A family of hundreds of dolphins. It was so difficult trying to stay balanced while filming and having to keep cleaning your lens. I couldn't see clearly. I was just pointing my camera in every direction, just hoping that I captured something good. And just like that, they were gone. But needless to say, that changed my mood for the day. After a great display, we were now making our way to the final stop of the tour, Turtle Island. I think we have one hour to be on this island to explore. So there's a tour guide, but he doesn't speak English. I'm gonna try to get away from this because I don't understand what he's saying. The island's name is derived from the resemblance of a turtle rising from the waters. Mainly fishermen lived here until it became the site of a military base. Currently, it's a tourist destination and natural conservation area. There's just so many tourists here. In 2000, the islands opened as a maritime ecological park with visitor restrictions for environmental protection. I have my own personal guide. <laughs> He's more like a chaperone, just to make sure I don't get lost from the group. At the end of the island is Quan Yin, the goddess of mercy. Dressed in white robe, she is the physical embodiment of compassion, overlooking the lake and its local residents. I feel good. I feel good. I'm ready to go. Alright, last day of the trip. And when I mean last day, I literally mean this is the last day. Like right after this, I'm going to Taipei Airport back home. <laughs> so I'm literally squeezing out every second of this trip as I can. Took a two hour pimped out bus to the mountains to go to this hot spring, which I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. And I think this is gonna be a great closure to this trip. A little bit different from what I usually do. Most of my trips I like to end doing something really adventurous and epic, like bungee jumping or sandboarding down a volcano. But I think this is gonna be just as good for a couple of reasons. One, the weather hasn't been cooperating that much. So even if it continues to rain, I'll already be wet. So it'll just add dramatic effect to, to the scenery. And secondly, this has been a very fast paced on the go trip. 
It's been about almost three weeks traveling in Taiwan, hitting seven cities, not including Keelong and Nantau. And it may seem like I'm just in one spot for a day and then I jump to the next place, but in reality, I've actually spent a couple of days in each city kind of for myself, you know, not filming anything, just seeing old places to enjoy the moment. And then the one or two activities or sites that I think would be interesting to show you, I film. And so after all of that, we're here. This is just a way for me to decompress and enjoy the final moments, but it's been a great, great trip. So let's um, let's head to the hot spring. Way out in the mountainous Datong Township of Yilan, I first came across the Zhou Zizhe hot springs on YouTube while doing research. Interestingly, boiling eggs is a feature here, which I opted to skip to get right into relaxing. That's what I want. These natural hot springs that come from the hillside contain alkaline, making it the only blue hot springs in Taiwan. And the individual rock pools are a nice touch. What a stark contrast from yesterday. The dolphin tour, which I wanted to do at the ending of this trip, and I'm glad I didn't. Um, it was on a Sunday, so it was very crowded, full of tourists, which is expected because it's Sunday. That's usually the time that people get to spend with their families and significant loved ones. But uh, today's Monday and there's really not that many people here. And it is starting to rain, which is perfect. It just adds drama to the landscape. This was a perfect choice for the last day of the trip. Holy shit, this was scorching hot. Ah. That's the best. That's what I've been wanting this whole entire trip. I'm gonna hit one of those pools again. I think that's it. I'm all pruned out. <laughs> so back to the Airbnb and then to the airport. This has been another amazing trip. That's a wrap for this one. So long Taiwan, it's been fun. After taking the train to Taiyong Airport in Taipei, it was a long 15 hour flight back home to New York City. It felt good returning all these years later and experiencing Taiwan with new eyes. A lot has changed since coming last, but some things remain the same. The language barrier is still prominent. Four times. What? Family Mart is still awesome. Mm. Mm. But mostly, it's the people. You can eat Taiwan by yourself? Yeah. Oh. Taiwanese are friendly and welcoming people, though that sense of culture shock was a welcomed feeling. As a solo traveler, it's the human interactions that's the most important factor for me. The little island of Taiwan has a lot to offer. While I had my fill of bubble teas, night market foods, she just blowtorched my steak. <laughs> That's incredible. Countless beautiful sights and seeing everything I pretty much set out to do, not everything goes according to plan. There were a few things I missed out on, seeing Taipei 101 on a clear day, hiking Turtle Island and Taroko National Park. It only means I'll have to return for a seventh time at some point. But none of these setbacks deterred me from having a great time. For the present time, I'm glad to be taking down an old placeholder with something I'm very proud of making and hope that it's a great representation of Taiwan. Until the next one. hike into his own soundtrack. Keep it up, keep it up. Keep it up, keep it up. <laughs> ah, we failed. Didn't run enough. We ended up skidding over here. Now we have to go back up and do it again. So this will be part of the blooper outtakes. Take two. Experience different areas of time. Oh, I had to get a new tripod. And we are in the Xinjing Farm. Ow. 